And so they were celebrating uh, where the no supporters gathered. 56% of Calgarians voting against hosting, 43% in favour. More than 304,000 ballots were cast. That's a pretty big turnout. The official results will be certified by Friday. Our Carolyn Dunn has reaction tonight from the Yes campaign party. Well, you know, they were trying to put on a brave face, calling for unity, uh, <clears throat> thanking the thousands of volunteers who came out, especially in the last few days, to really try and get out the yes vote. But obviously, the mood here is deflated. There are people who really invested in this campaign. And uh, today, they were disappointed by 6%. I'm here with Kyle Schufeld, who is a three-time Olympian and medal gold medalist. Kyle, tell me about what that felt like to hear the bad news from your perspective. It's gut-wrenching. I, I have a pit in my stomach right now. I'm, I'm highly disappointed that the city, the citizens of the city made that decision. I thought this was a great bid. I thought it was a responsible bid. It was a sustainable bid. It would have been, made our city more accessible with the Paralympic Games being here. There was a lot of elements to it, to me, that made sense, and it was an energy that could move the city forward. So the question that I'm asking myself now is, okay, if 56% of Calgarians don't want this, then what do they want? What are they willing to stand up for so we can move this city forward in a positive direction? Uh, what do you think spoke to the no side to get them out in those numbers? I'm asking myself that question, and I don't have an answer. I think I got really mixed messaging throughout it. I think the security costs were a big thing that came up. The IOC corruption was a big thing. Doping was a big thing. And people just didn't want to spend money. They couldn't see the vision of the importance of the Olympic Games. Calgary 88 was a magical thing for this city, and I don't think people could see what it could do for us. When I looked at this, I thought of 2056. What could this do for this city? And I thought that it could propel us in a new direction. So feeling very disappointed here tonight. Okay, well, thanks for joining us, even though it is a, a tough day. Uh, Kyle Schufeld, such a, an extraordinary Canadian Olympian. It gives you a sense, Carolyn, and gives our audience a sense of the kind of motion there was, certainly for the yes side, but the no has prevailed. Not a legally binding vote, though, Carolyn, and now it's up to Calgary City Council to try to figure out what to do next. That's right. City Council will vote to, you know, basically... Uh, confirm this. They're not legally required to vote one way or the other. So I guess what we're going to have to wait and see is whether the uh, councillors who have voted yes in the past are going to switch their vote to no now that 56% of those who voted uh, have spoken in that favour. And that's a, you know, there's some political risk involved in, for councillors to go against uh, the citizens of the city. And so we are going to be watching that as it goes forward in the next few days. And what we certainly know is that there was a large turnout. All the points of view were certainly expressed in the debate leading up to this. And just yeah. to review again the numbers Absolutely. from the city, 56.4% voting no, 43% uh, voting yes. Carolyn Dunn in Calgary, thank you very much for the update. So this is not, as Carolyn pointed out, a legally binding decision. If Calgary still decides to go ahead with its bid for 2026, which would be, as she points out, legally fraught, it would likely only face two others. Stockholm, also putting forward a strong bid, but it doesn't have government support. Sweden, a country known for winter sports and a country that's never hosted the Games. The other finalist is a combined Italian bid of Milan and the northern Alpine region of Cortino d'Ampezzo. Italy has hosted both the Summer and Winter Games before, so like Calgary, there is some sports infrastructure there, but the country is also facing financial issues, and there's no government money backing the bid. So the IOC generally is facing a problem. Cities around the world are not clamoring to host the Olympics. Vancouver. <laughs> Gone are the days of this fierce competition between many countries to win the Olympic Games. For the 2026 bid alone, Japan and Switzerland both dropped out. And the residents of Innsbruck, Austria, which like Calgary has hosted the Games before, let the public decide and it was an overwhelming no, all of which puts the IOC on offense. It's called the new norm, a commitment. To now we're seeing ads like this, trying to assure cities that the benefits of the Olympics outweigh the costs. 
But an expert who studies Olympic costs says that simply isn't true. The IOC gets most of the benefits, if not all of the benefits, and the cities uh, have to shoulder most of the costs. Still, with the Olympics comes recognition. It is one of the most watched events in the world, but that too can have a downside. Rio did not uh, end the Olympic Games covered in glory. Being in the global eye for two weeks also comes with costs. So where do the games go? There's always authoritarian regimes. Uh, there's always cities that are desperate for global recognition. Which leaves the IOC in a tough spot. Take the games to countries which don't have to justify the multi-billion dollar price tag or stick with cities which have hosted before and have the infrastructure. But as we're seeing with Calgary, it is not an easy sell.